and 10, Five Nights at the Car. This game makes me need to go to confession because the sheer amount of rage this game fills me with. The pure anger I feel thanks to this game cannot go away. I can't even call this a game. It doesn't deserve to be on this list because, well, it isn't a f game. This is a goddamn set of three pictures. Nothing more than that. Just three goddamn JPEG files, not even PNGs. How was this allowed to be on Game Jolt? Is there no rule that there has to be an EXE file? Like, this makes me so angry. What the actual hell? The description of this game is even worse. It's, hey bro, thanks for doing this job. You are a 10 year old kid who is in his car at the mall waiting for your mom. But weird things want to kill you. So your job is to protect yourself from them. If you're hearing this, you're crazy. End quote. What? This thing is so absurdly bad that it hurts me. This is literally just a JPEG file that looks absolutely atrocious. Like I know it takes a lot to make a game, but these images were made in what looks like MS Paint, not even Paint 3D. I could make a better game than this. Like this is just a cardinal sin of humanity that needs to just be taken out back and just right between the eyes. That's why I will send you to confession. This is why I need to go to confession. In at 9, Five Nights at F Boys. Five Nights at F Boys is a FNAF fan game created by Sable Lin and Joshua Shaw, an RPG maker version X Ace featuring unfair difficulty, text-to-speech voice acting, and beautiful, beautiful animatronic yiffing. You control Freddy, who decided that he wants to have a radical night of hardcore debauchery, and the surveillance cameras of the pizzeria are the only thing standing in his way. With the help of Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, Freddy must destroy the cameras so that he can have the time of his life. The Game Jolt page lists the features as over 50 lines of voice acted dialogue by text-to-speech programs, infuriatingly powerful and frustrating main bosses, even more infuriating infuriatingly powerful and frustrating bonus bosses. Seriously, even the regular encounters will fucking destroy you. Free money, balloon boy, foxy pleasuring themselves, and dragon adult recreational devices. Oh, homicidal party hats, and Tupac. And it ate FNAF 3 PowerPoint Edition. I think this game makes some sense as to why it's on this list already. It's a game that from the description was made in PowerPoint. This FNAF game was made in PowerPoint. How the ever-loving hell did that work? How can you make a FNAF game in PowerPoint? Like imagine if how, that's how Scott released the first game. That's just a freaking PowerPoint file. That would have been insane. Plus, this is just a very simple like click a couple times and get jump scared kind of thing. Don't even actually play. I mean like at least this jump scare is scarier than the original FNAF 3 jump scare though. Zing! Like this is just a sin because it feels bad and wrong to play it. Or to even have it downloaded honestly. I thought that the whole it's a PowerPoint thing was a joke. But no, it's literally a PowerPoint that you just click through. And it's 7, Five Nights at Wario's Debauchery Simulator. Made by Tong Koi on Game Jolt. The description for Five Nights at Wario's Debauchery simulator reads quote Wario wants to find the murder who killed them so they can go on a adventure that is full of MLG. And that's it. <laughs> the credits are to WWW Wario for creating Five Nights at Wario's and Scott Cawthon for making FNAF. This is just a sin, not even if you play it, but like if you just so much as look at the Game Jolt page, you're going to help. This just screams shit show, and to be frank, I don't really want to have to deal with it. This is almost certainly a riff on another fan game, which subsequently was inspired by Five Nights at Boys, so I don't know what to do anymore. Like, is this a fan game, or is it a fan game of a fan game of a fan game, or is it just like a fan game of a fan game? I don't know. My brain hurts. And at 6, Golden Freddy's Debauchery Simulator. The description for this game starts off with a warning right away. Quote, This is just a fan game for Five Nights at F Boys and not a game by the original creators. I am not trying to take credit for making the original games and I am just a fan of the original FNAFB games who had too much time on their hands. This is a Five Nights at F Boys fan game where you play as the best character, Golden Freddy, during the five days prior to the first FNAFB night of debauchery, as he has not just a night of debauchery, but a complete week of debauchery. But some F Lord keeps shitting on everything he loves, progressively making stuff and sh Contrived reasons for the first game's events ensue. And just like Five Nights at F Boys, this has a list of unnecessary details. Unnecessary difficulty. Seriously, this game will kick your teeth in if you aren't prepared. King party hats everywhere. Terrible fan made dialogue. Golden Freddy. Brutal romantic pirate conquest. Whatever that means. And finally, Wyvern adult battery operated fake extremities that I cannot talk about on YouTube. Yeah, it's one of those games. 
Halfway through in number five, Five Nights at Chucky's. In a few days, the old animatronics are going to be replaced, although that means someone's going to have to watch over the restaurant during the transitionary period. And management has given you a new temporary position as a night watchman. You've been provided with security cameras to ensure you're in the animatronic safety, along with a personal phone guide. It should be a simple job, right? This is an official, complete reboot of the popular 2015 FNAF fan game Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese's, featuring new mechanics graphics, and more while still keeping the spirit of the original game. A god FNAF fan game about f***ing Chuck E. Cheese. What the absolute living hell, people. Why? Like, I understand that Freddy's is a riff on Chuckies, okay, but we don't need this. This is the one thing that I thought was going to be safe from the FNAF world due to fear of copyright strikes or trademark law violations, but no. They just went for it. And it's a shame, because I don't want to suffer for the mistakes of lesser men, but I guess that I have to. And now, you do too. When my kid asks me to go to Chuck E. Cheese and I say no, they're gonna get all mad, but they're not gonna understand why. This is why. And for Purple Guy Simulator. Purple Guy Simulator isn't exactly the most sinful game. It's something that I was actually asking for, honestly, but I personally wanted it in VR. But straight up, I love the fact that there is actually a Purple Guy Simulator. Going around to Freddy's Pizzeria, killing kids, and then shoving their bodies into animatronic suits until you get caught by the cops is certainly something that I find blissful. It's relaxing, running around trying to find a kid who's alone so that you can shove a knife in their chest and then try to hide their body before anyone, like another kid or like another parent finds it. Oh man. My biggest question is, why do parents keep bringing their kids to the these restaurants if children end up going missing there. And a lot of children when I play. Like, who thought that the continued attendance to Freddy Fazbear's was a good idea? Hell, if someone sneezed in the wrong way, my father would like tell us not to go there for like five years after that. Like Barney was banned in my household for whatever reason. Getting close to the end in number three, five nights of love. Oh yeah. The game that I didn't know existed, but had a feeling it would. This game actually inspired a whole series of lists that I, even though I didn't know that it was a thing until I looked it up. But I figured if KFC had a dating simulator, FNAF must have one too, right? And it absolutely does. You heard me right, ladies and gentlemen, a FNAF dating sim. You love shipping animatronics with everything, living or not, breathing or not, with a human trapped in a suit or even just a pile of trash, you'll still ship it and it's disturbing. But this time, you get Get to decide who makes the cut in Five Nights of Love. Tracking via cameras the rooms of the public place, a player will periodically meet the live toy animatronics, Chica, Foxy, Freddy, and Balloon Boy. With every one of them, the player can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk or hug these unfortunate freaks, as the game calls it, giving them all their love and attention. Thanks to this treatment, the level of the toy's love towards you will only increase by 5% or 10%, but the energy level that you have, consequentially, will decrease by 10 or 25%. Once your energy is out, the player will have to return to their office and start the next day. However, you can also refill your energy at Balloon Boy by up to like 50% at once if you're lucky. But over a period of five days, you are trying to make these animatronics as happy as possible, earning bonus scores for how well you do. And ultimately, in a number two, A Shadow Over Freddy's. A Shadow Over Freddy's is a short point and click exploration horror game created to showcase unique free roam gameplay while keeping the spirit of Five Nights at Freddy's intact. This is actually a really good fan game, honestly. Playing as an individual trapped inside an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, you must traverse the location while avoiding the creeping darkness that infests every corner of the building. Complete different objectives each night, uncover your lost memories, and find a way out of this accursed restaurant. Relive the horror of the first FNAF game as you explore every nook and cranny of the dilapidated remains of the original location, but with a new twist on the formula that will scare even veterans of the series. However, the sinfulness of this game doesn't come from trying to sleep with or woo animatronics. Instead, it's sinful for the same reason that Purple Guy Simulator is. Because at the end of the game, it is revealed that you are... William Afton. So yeah, you play again as the psychotic killer of the series. And as we hear Henry say in FNAF 6, we're keeping the devil waiting. And finally, in at number one, Five Nights in Anime. I mean, look, I know that people's love of animatronics can get a little weird, but even I, of all people, someone who constantly jokes about hitting on Toy Chica and then actually goes and does it, I was surprised to learn that this game existed when Amanda mentioned it in the weirdest FNAF fan game collab video. I honestly imagined that this is what Five Nights at Love was going to be. And I've seen a lot of fan art for this franchise. A lot. And I thought I had seen it all. But apparently I hadn't. Enter Five Nights in anime. 
Oh boy, this is a game that was created to parody Five Nights at Freddy's, obviously, but instead of you being a security guard at Freddy's, you've been hired as a late night security guard at an anime convention. You know where this is going. And it's up to you to watch these anime style female animatronic versions of the Freddy's cast. Hijinks ensue. We've still got the core cast of animatronics, but just as well endowed anime women, because why not? I think the weird, like the really weird thing about this game is that how many people want more of it and like it got a second game. And not only that, but the, these characters, they aren't actually women. They're still animatronics. They're full on animatronics and they're not even possessed. So what's the point? <laughs> and it's at Five Nights in Anime. Okay, now this isn't exactly a mod for a FNAF game in general, um, but it's a modification of the characters and the story that will make your significant other question everything if they see you playing it. So you know what, I'm gonna count it plus I need more for this list. There was not 10 actual mods. I mean, like, hey, I know that people love animatronics, and I know that that love can get a little weird. But even I was surprised to learn that this game existed. And, and you know what, I've seen a lot of fan art for this franchise, a lot of it, and I, I thought that I'd seen it all. Uh, but apparently I haven't, because you know what? Here's Five Nights in Anime. This game was basically created to parody FNAF, um, where instead of you being a security guard at a Freddy's restaurant, you're actually hired as the security guard at an anime convention, and it's up to you to watch over these anime-style animatronic versions of the Freddy's cast. Yeah, they're still animatronics. We've got the core cast of animatronics, they're just stylized as well-endowed anime ladies, because why not? Uh, I don't know. I think it is, the really weird thing about this game is that how many people seemed to want more of it and then wanted a version that leads more into the genre itself instead of just being a parody, which is kind of weird. In at nine, buff Freddy and Morty. And don't think that I'm not gonna be inclusive. For all those who love the dudes, who love who love the the trash men of every universe, Buff, Freddy, and Morty are here to honestly make me feel just as uncomfortable as any other mods that are on this list. The last time that this mod was updated, it was six months ago, and it, quote, added super buff versions of Freddy and Monty, optionally making them even beefier. Created by store brand underscore mods on Game Banana, this is certainly something. Although they swear it was just meant to be a small model edit that makes Freddy and Monty a good bit beefier. Fear, they blame any other feelings that you get from this mod on a thumbnail for a gameplay video on the Vanamelon channel on YouTube, which, uh, yeah, I looked at it. It's certainly, it's certainly kind of sus. Okay, it is worth noting, however, that if you do want to install this, the mod requires Unnervum to actually install properly. Not sure what that means. I don't really mod security breach, but I guess plenty of you understand it. At least if you're watching this uh, this list to for more mods to add to your. Uh, to download section. I, I'm sure you'll understand it. <laughs> okay, these animatronics are scare like are already scarily jacked, though I didn't think you need needed to make them any beefier, but you did, so there you go. In at eight, Roxy's Mega Pizza Plex. Are you obsessed with Roxy? If you are, I'm sure any relationship you have is already on the rocks. However, if you really want to drive your obsession into the ground, this Roxy Mega Pizza Plex mod is for you. Created by user Moon on Game Banana, this isn't really that kind of mod, but it's definitely questionable why you'd change the Pizza Plex to be about Roxy. I mean, it could make sense for like after the main story when Freddy leaves, but even then it would be Monty who replaced him. Luckily enough though, they actually come up with an explanation for this and replace Monty with someone else. However, they also replace the original Roxy with Freddy. So if Freddy is still there, I don't know how this works with the lore, but you know what? Oh well. It's not a mod that will make your internet provider worry that you're okay, uh, but it's still a mod that will make your significant other or any prospective partner think twice about what's going on in your head. Um, you know what, either one, um, either head, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I definitely would question it as well. Chica's Mega Pizza Plex though, that's understandable. <laughs> and it's seven, Five Nights in Anime 2. And you know what, just when I thought that those fan games couldn't get any worse, Five Nights in Anime has a sequel, oh boy. And you know what, it, it, they just keep coming, it's like the all-star of FNAF games. This version of Five Nights in Anime is even more bizarre than the first one, and it's just, it's really more of the same, though, with the, the same tropes, but this time, parodying it. Can you guess it? Yeah, that's right. FNAF 2. My question is though, if this is a parody in the exact same vein, did we really need a sequel for it? Okay, I don't know 
but I, I mean there might have been a good amount of people asking for it considering how this is a thing that we did get. Although uh, I do want to acknowledge the fact that the first Five Nights in Anime game got 3.5 million downloads, uh, then the second one only got 1.8. So. Maybe you shouldn't have done it. Although 1.8 million, if I got 1.8 million views on a video, that would be insane. Uh, either way, it's better than that one mod for Security Breach, okay, that people keep telling me to download in my Instagram DMs. Don't worry, I'll talk about it later. Yeah, you do realize what platform this is, right? I could not share that. Although, if I did it on like Patreon or something. Does OnlyFans have rules against that? <laughs> and at six, Freddy Footbear. All right, look. Okay, I'm not one to yuck someone's yum. Okay, I'm not here to kink shame. I actually understand the science behind this kind of fascination. The two sections of the brain are so close that like the neural networks can sometimes get crossed. And that's totally 100% okay. All right, nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not into it, but if you are, that's fine. The only thing I'm questioning here is adding this feature to a giant 80s glam rock themed bear animatronic that's in a video game. That's the part that's kind of strange to me, okay? And the mod author isn't any help, okay? As Seaborg on Game Banana puts it, quote, uh, gives Glamrock Freddy a pair of human feet. No, I won't elaborate. So thanks for the help on that, Seaborg. Or Keborg, I guess. I don't know how exactly you would say it. It's, it starts with a C E, so I'm inclined to say Seaborg. But I'm because it's kind of like cyborg, but I'm also inclined to say keyboard because like you know Connor with the C. But you know what? Since you won't elaborate, neither will I. Next number. Halfway through in at number five, Fat Freddy and Monty. Ah yes, with a ton of people online claiming to love dad bods and only dad bods so that they can get even more followers and attention. You know that I was going to have to include Fat Freddy and Monty. I feel like like a dad bod Freddy and Monty would have been a better name for this and gotten more clicks. But you know what? It's fine. You can fat shame guys guys online, right? That's the rule, right? Body shame guys and guys only. Yeah, like 50 cent, oh man, <laughs> that, <laughs> that dude <laughs> let go. Uh, anyway, have you heard Lizzo's new song lately? Okay, sorry. Double standards aside, this is quite simply just a beer belly Monty and Freddy. There are, as the mod author Moik puts it, Mo Moik, I'm sorry for the horrible pronunciation, quote, Another cursed mod makes Montgomery and Freddy look like Discord mods. But at least this way, uh, you fitting in Glamrock Freddy's chest cavity actually kind of makes more sense because it wouldn't just be a 14 inch vertical hole. It's like it's like that, but horizontally now. So I, th I think that's kind of more accurate. I mean, I could ne I could nearly fit in that, I think. Like my shoulders are like 17 inches long, but like my head certainly isn't. So I feel like I could fit in it if I was facing the right way. Like th this is not 14 inches. So like, I could fit in it like that. I don't know. <laughs> so like this way, you don't have to be the size of a four year old anymore, Gregory, there you go. But seriously, why do you have this mod installed already? Why? In it for Five Nights of Love. Oh yes, another fan game, okay? One that I, I didn't know existed, but I, I had a feeling that it would. I figured that if KFC could have a dating sim, then FNAF might have one too, right? And it absolutely does. I'm just waiting for the FNAF console. Ah, you heard me right, all right? It's a FNAF dating sim. You love shipping animatronics with everything, living or not, in the games or not, and you know what, with a human trapped in a suit uh, and a pile of trash, or a human trapped in a suit and a short skeleton from the underworld, you'll still ship it and it's disturbing. But this time, you get to decide who actually makes the cut in Five Nights of Love. Tracking via cameras, you look at the rooms of a public place, and you'll periodically meet the, the, the toy versions of Chica, Foxy, Freddy, and Balloon Boy. With each one of them, the player can have like a heart-to-heart -heart talk or try to hug them, um, which is a, a whole other thing. But you know what, you give them all your love and attention. And then thanks to the treatment, the level of the toy's love towards you will increase. But also, your energy will decrease. And then once your energy is out, you have to return to your office, your actual room, and or I guess go home and then come back the next day and start again. Partially though, you can actually like recharge energy at Balloon Boy once a day, I think, if you get lucky. But over this period of five days, you, you gotta make sure as many animatronics love you as possible, which is weird and a whole, uh, I don't want to start any animatronic orgies, all right? That's kind of weird, um, but you know what, the higher score you get, the more successfully you complete this game. Why is this a thing? Why? Why? Getting close to the end in at number three, Vanny Thunder Thighs. I mean, it's all, it's something that we knew would happen, and I think that it's something that I've actually joked about in the past, about wanting, but like, why would you do this to yourself and us? But like, also mostly yourself, because your name is attached to it, and I very clearly am not actually trying to nail Vanny or Vanessa, okay? Chica's my main 
fucking girl. And you know what? I'm actually glad you kind of held back, okay? This mod could have been worse, okay? You could have taken this to the extreme. You could have made it that she's only wearing the mask. You could have made it that, that like, her suit is, is skimpy, like, basically every Skyrim armor mod ever. And you, you could have done a lot more, but you just made her thighs huge. And I can appreciate the restraint. I really can. So, uh, moi, mock, mock again. I think that's how you'd say the name. I'm sorry if I keep butchering it. Well done on restraining your yourself from going even harder pun absolutely intended of course like Jesus like I can't even deal with this anymore okay I think we've seen all of this enough specifically especially after seeing the comments on this mod that that one comment was <laughs> yikes and ultimately in at number two thick Thick. Building off the last number, for this number, I'm making my own category of mods, okay? This number is for any mod that makes any of the characters bigger, and in this case, typically thicker, okay? There are quite a few, and honestly, it's concerning. Fat Freddy and Monty, for example, like I, I, like I mentioned earlier. Also, Thunder Thighs Vanny, but also Thick Vanessa, and then multiple mods that, let's say, enhance Roxy and Chica, sometimes separately, sometimes not. Okay, there are separate, bigger Roxy and Chica mods, but also the one on the Nexus that makes them both bigger in certain areas, as the mod author describes it, okay? Like, I understand that sex sells, okay? I, I went to advertising school, I get that, but seriously, with animatronics? Like, come on, Chica was already pretty damn thick. <laughs> you didn't need to, you didn't need to pile on. Okay, and then Roxy already seemed to have a lot of fans based on her original version as well, especially given the, the thumbnail that I did for Gaming Elite when I pretended to censor her. Come on, they're just, they're man-made plastic constructed robots, okay, come on. I, I, I know that like I joke about Chica and it's probably gonna prevent me from getting a girlfriend at literally any point in my life, especially if they find these videos, but you know what, it's, it's not real, I'm kidding, it's a joke, okay? Or at least I am kidding until the day that Cheek is real. But until then, I'm kidding. All right, so relax. Please stop. Speaking of which, finally, in a number one, not modest animatronics. And this is another number that I felt like I, I had to put on this list because this is what made me have to do the list in the first place. I can't actually say the name of the actual mod without getting in trouble from the gods above, uh, those being Susan and the rest of YouTube's staff and AI algorithms. However, uh, this not modest or not clothed animatronics mod is very concerning for me, okay? People keep DMing me, trying to tell me to download this mod. No! <laughs> this this mod removes the, the, the clothing. I'm putting air quotes on it because, again, it's just, it's plastic, okay? And then it leaves both Roxy and Chica exposed. So clearly it's not gonna be a viable option for a YouTube playthrough, okay? And then the Patreon isn't even, I'm not, no, I'm not stooping myself to that level, okay? But also, why are they so well endowed with this mod? I, why, sweet heavens, why? Okay, at least if you're gonna make this mod, make it realistic, okay? Like, come on, they must be wearing some high tier compression fabric or something like that, okay? Because when you, when you have this mod, yowza! Uh, plus, apparently, images on Google also show me that there's a Monty version of this mod, giving him, as well, some well endowed chest articles, which is just, why? What the hell is up with that? Monty doesn't need chesticles, okay? In a ten, Springtrap and Ballora. This is probably the most sane one out of all of these ships, but sane does not mean not cringe. First of all, Ballora and Springtrap are not married, like I saw at least one comment, but seemingly multiple suggest in the previous ships list. That's not a thing. They're animatronics. And there is no evidence that Ballora is possessed either by a Mrs. Afton or literally anyone, despite the novels having the fun times be injected with the remnant of the five original animatronics. There's no evidence for that in the games. And while Ballora could have been created as a surrogate mother or a representation of a woman that Afton loved or couldn't have or whatever the story ends up actually being, this is still all kinds of weird. Like, what are you people doing? Bro, do you realize that this is a serial killer trapped in a robot suit? Right? Like this, this isn't just your old run-of-the-mill ship. In fact, none of these are. To put it into a different perspective, you're basically shipping Jeffrey Dahmer with a robot woman. You're shipping Ted Bundy with a fembot, for God's sakes. Like, does that really seem normal to you? 
because it shouldn't. In at nine, Springtrap X Mat. Now, um, I'm not quite sure what this is shipping because there was no way in hell that I was putting that in my search history. But when I looked up Springtrap X, this was one of the suggestions. Springtrap and Mat. Now, I'm fairly certain that this is talking about the Springtrap and the Mat from the Fazbear Frights book Bunny Call, where a video game designer named Matt ends up giving birth to a real world version of Springtrap, but a load of people guessed or uh, assumed that this Matt was intended to be a reference to Matt Pat of Game Theory, which is honestly pretty terrifying. But now, people have begun shipping the characters, and the only reason this is higher on the list instead of lower is because this is only my suspicion, because again, there was no way in any dimension or universe that I actually clicked that suggestion. No way in living hell would I ever do that. Not if hell froze over, not if pigs could fly, not if butterflies flew out of my ass, not if a dinosaur head popped out of my butt and ate my coffee table. No, not a chance in literally any dimension. And I subscribe to the many worlds theory, much like how you should subscribe to the channel. So technically, there should be a dimension where I clicked it, but not this time. No, sir. And it ate Springtrap and Vanny. Now, I'd like to point out to the jury that Springtrap is a serial killer trapped inside a robot, but also that they do not exist as of security breach when Vanny is introduced, since at this point Springtrap has turned into Burntrap. So, for this to work, there would need to be a load of shenanigans, since for Vanny to be created, Springtrap has to become Scraptrap, and then burn in FNAF 6, releasing his soul to possess the hard drive that gets scanned into Help Wanted, that then takes over our brains as Vanessa in Help Wanted. So, for Vanny to be created, Springtrap has to die. Neither can live while the other survives, as the Harry Potter prophecy says. So, like how on earth are we supposed to ship Springtrap and Vanny? when it's literally impossible. This is why I don't like the, these kinds of things, okay? It makes it makes me think, and it's, it just seems impossible. Like, I don't want to think about the lore implications of shipping animatronics. This is all kinds of cursed, and it actually physically hurts me. I feel physical pain, like someone stabbed me. And it's seven, Springtrap and Mangle. Springtrap and Mangle is one of the ships that was suggested the, the most in the comments of cringy FNAF ships, and I can see why. Firstly, what the hell? Okay, why would you even consider these two to be a good pairing? Second, isn't Mangle possessed by a dog? Like, didn't we settle on this? Like, William used Mangle and Susie's dog as like a remnant experiment to see if he could actually get robots to be possessed? Or have we forgotten about that for some reason? And I mean, like, a literal animal as well. Like, not he a dog, like he's literally a dog. Like, this, this is borderline Beauty and the Beast kind of thing going on here. Like, what the living f*** are you people thinking? We're shipping a serial killer who only kills kids and, and a goddamn actual animal possessing an animatronic. Like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Why are we like this? This makes me want to actually leave the community and stop making FNAF videos. Like, why is this a thing? I don't want to be associated with this. So, because of that, we're moving on. And it's six, Springtrap and Golden Freddy. Now, in the previous ship's video, I mentioned how shipping Springtrap with anyone was cringe, but specifically the original five animatronics, since each one are one of his victims and a kid. Golden Freddy is no exception. Remember, people, since Springtrap is the combination of, the Sp of Spring Bonnie and William Afton, who by all means is a real person in their reality, this means you are shipping this person with the animatronic version of Golden Freddy, which is filled with the rotting corpse of Cassidy. Cause some consider Cassidy to be the one you should not have killed, and while those who think that are wrong, that would only add yet another layer of f to this already messed up ship. You people need to stop this. The only way that it could get worse was if he is shipped with a family member that he ended up causing the death of. Oh wait, yeah, it's not on this list because it was too much for a whole number, but there is also a spring trap and crying child ship that I think needs to be investigated by the authorities or something. Because like, that that's not even like daddy issues, okay, that's mental issues. Plus, again, like, the Vanny thing, impossible lore wise. Halfway through into number five, spring trap and Michael. Oh yes, like I said, the only way it could get worse was if he was being shipped with a family member that he ended up causing the death of. And here we are. The Springtrap X Michael ship is one of the most horrific things I've ever witnessed. And honestly, even talking about it, I kinda wanna hurl. And before you get mad at me saying William didn't cause the death of Michael or Crying Child, yes he did. 
He was the one who superpowered the Fredbury animatronic and gave it the ability to crush a skull. And before you try using the whole, if someone holds your hand under a hydraulic press, it's not the person who made the hydraulic presses fault on me, okay? Those, these two things are entirely different scenarios. <sighs> In this case, this is like someone pushing me onto a fence that is labeled as a normal fence, but then someone came along and made it an electric fence without anyone knowing. In that case, the person who made the fence electric is at fault. Secondly, William, by killing people and causing his son to feel immense remorse, caused his other son to die. By killing people, he said his fate is being stuck in the FNAF 6 location, one that Michael felt the need to be at to ensure his father's destruction, which caused him to be trapped inside since Henry never provided an exit. And you wanna ship them? Knowing they're related. Y'all are in it for spring trap and sands. You know what? I'm gonna say what I said last time I brought this up because honestly, this is worse than almost anything else on this list. Like, why are you shipping spring trap with sands? That's not even a character in the series, for God's sakes. That is cringe. How the ever loving duck does that work? There are like whole Instagram accounts that I've seen revolving around this concept and I don't know if you're joking or not. Who thought of this? What, what made this idea come to life? How many recreational substances were you on? Like, Sans is a two foot tall skeleton boy, and Springtrap is a dead serial killer who's taken more lives than years Sans has lived. Like, n not really, because Sans is like two million years old, but that's even more weird. Like, do, do you see my point? The balance also is just kind of confusing. Okay, it's like someone who's like really short married to someone who's like six feet. It's like a, like a five foot tall person being married to a seven foot tall person. How does that even work? How do, what? Like, Sans would need an actual ladder to have a, a proper conversation with Springtrap, let alone anything else. Like, not even a step ladder. Okay, you would need like an actual ladder. I wouldn't even bat an eye if they were using one of the extending ladders that fire trucks have on, on the top. Yeah, this is all kinds of screwy. And besides, at, at that at that scale, he's below d level too. So what's the point? <laughs> Getting close to the end in at number three, Spring Trap and Baby. This is even worse than the Michael one. Because not only is Spring Trap again the father of the girl possessing baby and the direct cause of her death, but this girl is also knee high to a grasshopper at the time of her death. Do you realize how absolutely disgusting that is? When I looked up Springtrap X, as I was doing for most of these numbers, this is one of the first ones that came up. And you know what? That's just wrong. This is shameful. It's even worse than the Michael one. I'm not even joking. Who on God's green earth thought that this was a good idea? And before you defend yourself saying it's the character of Baby, firstly, William designed Baby to appeal to his daughter. Secondly, the only version of the Baby character that we know of is the one that Elizabeth is possessing. I feel like everyone who ships this needs a long, hard talk with Chris Hansen and that Russian guy on TikTok who was catfishing adults with a 14-year-old profile and then scaring them so bad they never did it again. Like, holy sweet Jesus, this is messed up. This is one of the two things that I hate the most in the world, and I don't even want to think about how people can actually be shipping this for real. So we're moving on. That's not my, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm mad about this. This is, I'm mad. And ultimately, in at number two, Springtrap and the Puppet. While this isn't as messed up, okay, there has been an awful amount of fan art about this ship that honestly makes me want to yak. Firstly, this is William's first victim, guys. So like, why would you ship them together? Secondly, the amount of art that I've seen where I have seen them with a baby is too much. Like a, like a literal child, okay? People. These are robots, and one of them is a killer trapped inside of a robot with no vital human recreating organs existing. So, why are you trying to make them have babies? Please, for the love of everything that is holy, unholy, persistent, illegitimate, dark light, whatever you want to praise, for the love of it, please stop. It's wrong, it's horrifying, it's one of the most messed up things that I could think of. However, it still doesn't top our number one spot. And you'll see why in a minute. I just, I, I can't handle this. Why? Why would you do this? I, this was, all, this was originally going to be number one. Um, 
But I, I just didn't want to give the people who do ship this the satisfaction of it being on the top of a list. Because even though that would mean that it's the cringiest ship of them all, they ship the puppet in spring trap, so clearly they can't understand logic, and they would just see number one and be happy. And finally, in at number one, Springtrap X Reader. This feels like a personal attack, if I'm being frankly honest, because you know what, if I read one of these, I would have been the reader, and I don't want that to happen. Number one, this was the number one search when I looked up Springtrap X, okay, Springtrap X Reader, and I don't even want to know how that works. Like, I, I know how it works, but I don't want to know how someone reading a fanfic would end up falling in love with Springtrap, a literal animatronic man serial killer hybrid. What the everlasting sweet holy Jesus is going on with this community. These are the kinds of people who send Polaroids to serial killers who are in prison for life. I don't understand it anymore. I need to take a shower, sit on the ground, and cry for the entire weekend because this is, this is just what? How, how does one even come up with the concept for falling in love with an animatronic man hybrid? If it was Chica, I'd understand, but Springtrap? He is one of the most Rule 34 animatronics out there for seemingly no reason because I just want death now. The fact that people are falling in love with William Afton's filleted body stuck with a bunch of robotic parts and I can't get a girl to stick around for more than a couple days is pretty damn ridiculous. Maybe I should like finally cave and let this series turn me into the maniac I'm probably going to become because apparently they get all the girls. And a 10 Freddy and Chica. This is actually just because of the thumbnail for the uh, original scary fanships video because I remember making that thumbnail and it was a traumatizing experience. Why do people ship animatronics anyway? Or like the characters. Like, what's the point? What's the amusement in it? Like, there's no way that, especially in this series, any of these characters are going to be confirmed to be dating. Like, I can understand shipping characters that might get together, like, on TV shows, like Bones or Arrow, but these characters are just giant animals, so what's the point of trying to ship them? I I'm not usually one to yak someone's yik, but like, come on. Seriously, I just, I don't understand it. And, I mean, like, a bear and a chicken? Do you know the size difference there? I could, I couldn't even, like, I don't even care about the size difference of the characters, I'm talking about the actual animals, because I can't wrap my head around it, okay? Although, a chicken the size of a bear would be a good source of protein. In a nine, Baby X Puppet. Okay, why? Like, what the ever-loving hell is this? I search up cringe FNAF ships, like I'm not gonna get weird ads from it, and the first thing I see is Baby and the Puppet. Do you realize that these are like, dead people, right? Like, one of them is the daughter of the dude that killed the other. Like, this is some serious star-crossed lovers b BS. Cause that makes absolutely no sense. This is worse than Romeo and Juliet with guns. Like, this is worse than the Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo and Juliet modern day movie. And, even if you are shipping the characters, why? Why do the puppet and baby deserve to be together? Like, what? One of them was designed to take lives, literally. And the other was designed to guard a girl so that her life wasn't taken. This is some serious reaching, and I mean like Mr. Fantastic level reaching. Not to mention that there are literally three year olds possessing these animatronics. So I don't know what kind of creep level you're on, but I, I can hear Chris Hansen knocking on your door, trying to ask you some questions. Like, bro, seriously, that's more sus than Gregory venting. Hop on the sus bus, bro, here we go. And it ate Roxy and Monty. Being the newest additions to the FNAF roster, it was inevitable that these two characters would end up being shipped. But why? <laughs> They're robots. They don't have the capacity for actual emotions. Everything they feel or seem to feel is just coded as their personality. They don't really have any actual emotions. It's impossible. So why ship these characters? And the reason I went with Roxy and Monty is because I looked up Roxy and the first ship suggestion was Monty, followed by Chica, which is a whole other level of weird because like, what? Plus, Chica is mine. <laughs> the only sh the only Chica ship I allow is me and Chica because it's the only thing that makes sense. But seriously, I, I don't see the fascination with this. These two specifically, like Roxy and Monty seem like your typical Instagram gym rat couple that, that fight all the time unless they're at the gym, but you can't see it because, you know, it's Instagram. So I don't know why you people think that this is A, a good idea, or B, normal. 
Speaking of not normal, in at number seven, Ennard and Exotic Butters. This is just, what the actual f Shipping animatronics based on characters is, is one thing. Sure, shipping a collection of animatronics with no discernible character is another, but then shipping that amalgam with a basket of butter is totally a different thing. That honestly makes me feel incredibly cursed. Like what the actual ever loving hell is that? How, how does that even, like how would that even, it's a basket of butter people. It doesn't even have eyes, let alone the capacity to love. Why is entered an exotic butters even a thing? This is one of the most confusing moments of my life, including what happened literally a year ago, probably like, to the week. <laughs> I have debated just like, Letting this whole thing be a run-on sentence because I can't handle the amount of buffoonery that is going on in order to cause this to even cross someone's mind. Then, like, this is the kind of thing that makes me question ships altogether, like in every single aspect of reality. Because you can argue that it's the characters you're shipping all you want, okay? But this disproves that concept in my mind. Like how one person does something and then the entire class gets punished. Yeah, you can blame the Ennard X Exotic Butters shippers for making the entire concept of shipping characters and whatever ridiculous, okay? And that's not even the worst one. We're not even halfway done. And it's six, Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I thought that this was fairly normal. But looking this up, this was, this was generally not safe for the majority of audiences. This is some of the most concerning fan art that I have ever seen. Like seriously, I'm, I'm gonna need some actual eye bleach after this. So if you could please just refrain from posting anything like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. Like none of the drawings that I saw were friendly. They all had something exposed, and sometimes had multiple somethings. Like, Bonnie is supposed to be a male character, okay? And in the, in, in the fan art, sometimes he was, sometimes he wasn't. Sometimes, they were both. Like, same thing with Chica, okay? And honestly, it's not that like I'm against it or anything. It, it's just, it's disturbing when it's animatronics that are anthropomorphic animals, okay? I mean, like, these animatronics, they're robots. They don't really have genders or biological sexes, because, again, they're robots, so who really cares? But, like, what the hell? These, these are as intense as a heart attack. Like, Jesus. It was just Easter, and this is the reason Jesus didn't come back this time. Al although, from the context of these images, in, the, in this case, uh, we already got a second coming. Uh, ironically, Bonnie is a bunny, and so is the Easter bunny. But but for real, th this is some haunting stuff. Plus, again, cheek is mine, so back on. Halfway through in at number five, Ennard and Ballora. This is a whole other kind of weird. Like, we have some messed up stuff coming up in the next few numbers, but this is a, a, a little uh, self-gratifying, if you ask me. Did anyone realize that Ballora was a part of Ennard when they were drawing these? Cause like, that's a whole other can of worms that's just trying to bust out that I'm ignoring cause I don't want to look at it. In fact, this whole fishing shop is giving me weird vibes. This is just... Plus, if you think about it, Ballora was intended on being a surrogate mother. And then, in Ennard, is baby. Ennard is, is in part baby, meaning that this ship is in essence Elizabeth with her mother. Like not literally, thank God, although I'm positive that it's out there somewhere. I just, I don't, I, I don't have the courage to look that up. Like, what the heck? What, what the hell? Like, the, what's the point of this? Seriously, no jokes. Why do, why do people ship animatronics? I don't get that mindset. It's not like they're gonna make any of these canon, because again, they're animatronics. It's weird. Although, I guess it's not as bad as, like, shipping, like, people together. Like, like, real people, not characters. Like, instead of shipping Peter and MJ, you ship Tom and Zendaya. I mean, like, that would be weirder if they weren't dating, but, like, if you ship two, like, actual humans that aren't dating, that's weird. They, they are dating, right? I thought that was confirmed. In at four, Springtrap and Sans. This is just... Th th this is worse than Ennard and Exotic Butters, honestly. Like, wh why are you shipping Springtrap with Ness? Eh, get it? Because Sans is Ness. Eh, that's not even a character in the series, for God's sakes! Like, that is cringe! How the ever-loving hell does that even work? 
There are whole Instagram re accounts revolving around this concept and I don't know if it's a joke or not. Like who thought of this? What made this idea come to life? How many illicit substances were you on at the time of conception? How many cigarettes did you smoke? How much wine did you- how much sushi did you eat? When you were inseminated with this idea. Sans is like a two foot tall skeleton boy, and Springtrap is a possessed, supposed to be dead serial killer who has taken more lives than years that Sans has lived. Okay, not really, but you get my point, right? Like, the balance here is just all kinds of confusing. Like, like when I saw who Vanessa Morgan was engaged to at one point, like the girl from Riverdale who was engaged to the football player that was like twice her height and three times her width. How does that even work? Sans would need an actual ladder to actually even have a conversation, let alone kiss anyone. Not even like a step ladder, like an actual ladder. I wouldn't even bat an eye if they were using one of the extending ladders that fire trucks have. Like, yeah, this is all kinds of screwy. And this is in part the reason I need to bleach my eyes, honestly. Getting close to the end into number three, Vanny and Burn Trap. This one is just all kinds of wrong. Firstly, this is the most Stockholm Syndrome thing to the goddamn max. Okay, like Vanny is literally being kept captive inside of her mind by a burn trap to a point where she literally fears for her life when her shrink finds out she bought fabric for a costume. She's under his command at basically any time, and then you people want to ship her with the body of a dead serial killer trapped in an animatronic that was then repossessed by the same dead serial killer's sentient code form. Do I need to explain how messed up that is? Really? Like, bro, we thought William was rotting before, now he is literally rotten. Now, it is finally his corpse version. Like, what the hell? Who, the ever-loving flying f thought that this was a sane combination? Like, don't get me wrong, Vanessa is looking fly as hell in the base game. The sass when interrogating Freddy certainly got me moving. But this is messed up, like, at least ship her with an alive serial killer. And ultimately, in at number two, Mike and Baby. Shipping Michael and Baby is very similar to shipping Vanny and Burn Trap, considering how Baby is definitely going to be a bigger antagonist later in the series, or at least has the potential to be, since in the FNAF 6 ending, she wanted to impress dear old dad. But this time around, it has the added layer of Michael and Baby being siblings. Yes, if you don't remember, Somehow, Baby is possessed by the spirit of Elizabeth, William's daughter, and more importantly in this situation, Michael's sister. You can tell me that it's the character you're shipping all you goddamn want, but in this instance, you are shipping a character who in that reality, in that world, is a real human. Therefore, you would have to be shipping them with the animatronic that is also real. And just, how... How would that have to work from a logical standpoint? That's just how it would have to work from a logical standpoint. Therefore, you are literally shipping Michael and his dead sister. And that is the most cringe-worthy thing that I have ever seen. Okay, well, the, the second cringiest, because this next one, oh boy, is it a doozy. And I've mentioned this many times before, but as of like a month ago, for reasons that I will not explain, I have a vendetta against this <laughs> So I am tearing him to shreds as much as I can. Finally, in at number one, Springtrap and anyone. Okay, Springtrap is one of the most confusingly Rule 34 characters I have ever seen. There have been multiple people who have DM'd me on Instagram saying that they're in love with Springtrap, and then there are others who have sent me ruled art of Springtrap, along with the reason that caused me a great deal of pain that I'm not gonna talk about. But let's get one thing straight, okay? No matter who you are shipping, Springtrap and whoever, you are shipping them with a possessed serial killer who probably took their lives to begin with, who should be dead, but is being kept alive by the spirit of their dead son. There is no Springtrap character, okay? The character is Springlock Bonnie. But using the name of Springtrap, you are actively shipping the William Afton version of Spring Bonnie. And let's say you're, you're shipping him with any of the original five animatronics. It doesn't matter who, okay? Boom! You're shipping him with one of his victims because, again, he is in that real world a person. Same thing as Michael, okay? Ship him with the puppet, boom, his first victim. With Baby, boom, that's his daughter. The amount of um, let, let's call it love that this character gets is frightening and in reality it showcases the daddy issues you all have and normally that would be fine But 
in this instance, this is like, was your father Jeffrey Dahmer? Number 10, Mermaid Chica. I don't think we really needed a, like a Chica mermaid, and yet that's something we got. Mermaid Chica appears in Security Breach, and she's actually originally from Help Wanted. She was more creepy looking there, actually, which is kind of awkward in its own way. But in Security Breach, Glamrock Mermaid Chica only appears as a cutout, and she is looking weirdly attractive and flirty? I don't know if it's just me seeing that, but her design has definitely been made less creepy and more cute at the very least. This version of Chica also doesn't have a cupcake, but instead has an oyster to supplant her little animatronic cupcake sidekick. Number nine, getting the Faz watch. Another strange thing in the world is when you as Gregory berate Glamrock Freddy for talking so loudly. One, it's pretty awkward how inherently rude Gregory seems here and just in general. Freddy only seems to want to help, but Gregory constantly criticizes him for doing even that, complaining that the booming volume of his voice could all too easily attract the security guard Vanessa, who Gregory does not trust and doesn't want to find him. Which kinda also seems suspicious. What are you hiding, Gregory? Why don't you want security to find you? But the other weird thing is that before this, you were in Freddy's chest cavity, and in order for him to communicate with you without being outright heard, he decides to give you a Faz watch. Now where does he keep said Faz watch? Well, also in his chest cavity, which implies that during the time that you were in there before, you were actually sharing that very small space with a crank and a gift box, which is how you get the Faz watch. Even though when you look in, to take that Faz watch, it looks like this device takes up the entire space of Freddy's chest cavity. So how is that possible? Or does he just make Faz watches appear out of thin air? I don't know. <laughs> Physics. Number eight, climbing inside Freddy. Another weird part of this entire thing, despite it being super cool as well, is actually climbing inside Freddy. That is because it definitely seems like you would not be able to fit inside his chest cavity. Even minus, like I said, the crank and the gift box, which are removed after you get the Faz watch from Freddy. Still, even with that space cleared, it just looks way too small for how big the character is supposed to be. It kind of makes me think they should have designed Glamrock Freddy to just be like basically a giant booming character. He's already pretty giant, but I just feel like he needs to be even larger so the scaling would work better in your mind. But also, then he'd probably be like way more intimidating and kind of scary, and they probably wanted to make sure he stayed, you know, kind of like approachable and friendly looking since he's supposed to be kind of like your pal in the game. So I get it, but it still is super awkward because it doesn't feel like it makes any spatially logical sense for at least enough for this to even be possible. Number seven, Freddy teleporting. This was something that was later fixed in the game, but initially it was kind of like a glitch, or really just a choice in terms of the game's programming that was really creepy. Originally, when you summoned Glamrock Freddy, he would just appear near you. He wouldn't have to run over from where he was previously, but instead would be able to just like kind of shortcut to where you were by seemingly teleporting to your side as Gregory in the game, usually appearing behind you so that it didn't seem like he necessarily teleported, but it would be like, no one's there, there's Freddy. <laughs> so a little weird. This wasn't in canon teleporting, at least I don't think it was intended to be that way anyways. Just a choice made by the game designers on how Freddy would appear near you when you called him and you needed him. Later on this was patched and changed so that when Freddy came, you could always pretty much see him running up as opposed to sneaking up behind you. Which admittedly was a little creepy and awkward, but was maybe a bit more convenient too. Also, I don't even know if it was less creepy and awkward than Freddy like charging towards you, which is also kind of scary, admittedly. Number six, having a crush on Chica. Obviously, we all have a crush on Chica. There's nothing awkward about that, right? But there is something really awkward about how much Gregory seems to enjoy doing harm to animatronics. That for sure is awkward. Case in point, when we are forced as Gregory to get Chica into the trash compactor so we can literally have a crush on her by crushing her. Not only do you as Gregory turn on the trash compactor with Chica in it either, but you are also forced to literally push her into it and then watch as she's crushed right before your eyes. Though really, you'd think backing up here would make more sense. As a result of staying there to watch, you actually end up being dragged down into the garbage chute, and all because Gregory seems to be more obsessed with watching Chica like get crushed up close after pushing her in than his own safety which is also in itself pretty awkward and disturbing. Like I love how Gregory pushes her and then he's just like, yes, yes, be destroyed. <laughs> Gregory is definitely 
going to grow up to be an interesting adult. Number five, taking Roxy's eyes. It doesn't end with crushing Chica. It really only continues to get worse from there. Although I guess if like me, Chica is one of your favorite animatronics, then it already starts out pretty bad. I don't know about you, but I really didn't want to crush Chica. With Roxy, at least for many of us, she's kind of like one of the most annoying characters in this game. Although, of course, if there are any major Roxy fans out there, please let me know in the comments. If you actually happen to like like Roxy, that's cool too. If you don't find her annoying, that's fine, but she kinda annoying. With Roxy though, we literally need to take her eyes out of her head, which is, well, there's no other way to say it. It's pretty gruesome. And once again, Gregory does this all by himself, which is disturbing. Awkward and disturbing. I mean, we don't see it, but we hear it. We know what's happening. Number four, confessing to Freddy. Another bizarre thing that happens in the game happens as the result of you as Gregory stealing all the animatronics parts to, you know, upgrade Freddy with. You basically have to confess to Glamrock Freddy at one point that yes, you stole these pieces from the bodies of his friends. Basically, dismembering and mutilating them. Which, yeah, it just, it doesn't sound too good, does it? It's already awkward enough to have to do this in game and watch as Gregory does so almost with seeming delight. But then to hear how casually Gregory plays off, you know, sharing where these pieces came from, and to hear Freddy be so sad about it? Oh boy, it's an awkward conversation to listen in on. Never mind technically be a part of. Freddy's like my friends and you're like, well, you know how it is. Sometimes I gotta destroy your friends, Freddy. Just don't worry about it. I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. Number three, Vanny defeated. The ending where you can just choose to go for Vanny is like a weird one. So as it starts off with Freddy, as you finally have the option to leave the pizza plex, asking you if you wanna stay, leave, or you can also choose Vanny. The choice is yours. Will you stay or go, Gregory? Um, Vanny. <laughs> what a strange response, even. Vanny. If you choose Vanny as a bizarre answer to a question that had nothing to do with her, really, then you will go after Vanny, attempting to get her where her home base is in the game at Phaser Blaster. Once there, there is no way to play through this apprehension, really. Kind of, It kind of just happens, with you not really getting much of a say in how it plays out. You're more a witness than an active participant, I would say. Freddy is immediately taken off the board, and then you're forced to pursue Vanny and order her loyal animatronics to turn on her, dismantling her to defeat her. What is so messed up about that? Well, you're dismantling her, and she's not an animatronic. She's like a flesh and blood person, so... That's pretty messed up. Dismantling. Number two, comic book endings. One of the weird things about Security Breach in general is the endings that we get where we don't even really get complete like animations or cinematics. Instead we get some like moving comic book pages. It just seems weird and awkward that the rest of the game is like really polished and yet they decided to go with this for all of the endings. Like you don't even really get to play through them even though they seem to have parts to them in terms of the story that seemed like they would actually be kind of fun to play. I'm not sure if this is just a weird style choice or if this was just because, you know, they didn't want to spend the time or money incorporating the ending scenes into the same style of animation and gameplay as the rest of the game and or making them like, you know, just more playable in general as opposed to something that you just kind of watch happen in a comic book form and then you're like, well, I guess that's the ending. Cool. Number one, the elevator. Probably one of the most awkward parts of Security Breach is the elevator interludes. When you have to get in the elevator with Freddy and you're just kind of there for a while. Especially because as soon as you're in close quarters, it becomes clear how weird and freaky Freddy is just in general. As soon as you're forced to focus on him, you'll notice how he creepily just like stares at you, almost obsessively. And because you're in close quarters, Glamrock Freddy will continuously kind of just open and close his chest cavity, preparing or like offering for you to like jump inside it. It just seems it seems really sinister, even though he's, you know he's your friend, and you know Freddy wouldn't harm you, but you can't help but question this odd behavior, or at least you're definitely freaked out by it. It's just a weird time. I feel like when I'm in the elevator, I'm like, just don't look. Just don't look at Freddy. Look anywhere else. Unit 10 Purple Guy Simulator. Okay, 
Purple Guy Simulator isn't exactly the weirdest game. It's something that I was actually asking for, uh, but honestly, I wanted it in VR. But straight up, I love the fact that there is a Purple Guy Simulator, okay? Going around to Freddy's Pizzeria, killing kids and shoving their bodies into animatronic suits until you get caught by the cops is certainly something that I find blissful. <laughs> Man, I hope, like, shrinks don't watch these videos. <laughs> it's relaxing running around and trying to find a kid who's alone so you can shove a knife in their chest and then try to hide their body before another kid or a parent finds it first. My biggest question is why do parents keep bringing their kids to these restaurants if children ended up going missing there? Like, who thought that the continued attendance to Freddy Fazbear's was a good idea? Like, hell, especially if I was the purple guy, because based on the, the, the time I played Purple Guy Simulator on this channel, Damn! <laughs> Clean sweep! Ah, uh, if my- if I sneezed wrong someplace, okay, my father would prevent us from stepping foot within the same block of that place for years, okay? Which, I guess, given the recent situation, is understandable, but not when I was eight years old. In at nine, FNAF Go! So this game has not actually been finished as of yet, or at least to my knowledge, but it is a thing that has a page on Game Joel. The page for it describes this as a FNAF fan game inspired by Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Oddly enough, it's not the only FNAF fan game that I've seen that makes reference to Pokemon, although this one obviously would like to do a lot more than just blend the two worlds together, kind of like the whole Torchica thing from a previous video. As weird as it sounds, this is basically what we have have with special delivery, which a lot of people love. So, although it's definitely still a weird premise for a game, it also seems to be a potentially profitable one. But hey, just because something is weird doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad idea. Like me, I'm weird, but I'm not a bad... I, that, that's a horrible example. I am a bad idea. If you want to make mistakes, make me. <laughs> and it ate five nights at YouTube office. How would you feel about working at the YouTube home office? I'm sure plenty of you think that that would be a dream come true. However, apparently, at least according to this game, please don't sue us YouTube, apparently there are YouTubers that sleepwalk into the office, and there are also certain YouTubers that haunt the office. Whatever that means, since from what I can tell, all these YouTubers are still alive at the time of recording, and certainly at the time that the game was made. Basically, this game works as a FNAF 2 clone with YouTubers instead of the animatronics, where PewDiePie is the puppet, having to wind up a music box to get him to chill. Because if not, you'll get the ultimate bro fist to the face and then get cancelled for associating yourself with PewDiePie. <laughs> That's right, the actual eminent threat of this game isn't death, it's cancellation. Social death. Actually, not really, like you will get yourself got. And, uh, but as a YouTuber, okay, which still feels weird to say despite it being my life for the past three years, I don't want I don't want to play this game, it's just concerning. And it's seven, Bonnie Simulator. Speaking of weird simulators like we were in the first number, here's another one for you, Bonnie Simulator. I find this game to be both strange and delightful, but while Purple Guy Simulator is a game that I think many of us wanted uh, in a weird way, uh, obviously I wanted it, I don't know if anyone was really demanding Bonnie Simulator, I, although I can't deny it's pretty fun. The question that the creator of this game had been asked is, why do we just play as Bonnie in the simulator, which takes place during FNAF 1? Why not any other animatronics? Well, that's because they only had so much time <laughs> to make this game, and Bonnie is their favorite. You can't fault them for that. Although I do have to say, I would love to see their take on a Chica simulator. Hey, mommy! And it's six, five nights at the Chum Bucket. After the Krusty Krab was burnt to the ground by the rogue animatronic workers, the sole living survivor of the Inferno was taken captive by the robot's malevolent controller. When the player awakens, they are to find themselves trapped and located inside the security room of the Chum Bucket. Within the first and second night, the business official who talks to the player discovers that there is another survivor that is trying to save you. The business official decides to allow the other survival to come and find you in order to kill you both. The player once again has to survive six nights against the animatronic on slot as they wait for their savior, the man behind the door instead of the slaughter. While its predecessor game, Five Nights at the Krusty Krab, is certainly something, Five Nights at the Chum Bucket just seems even weirder to me. Like, why? Why would the Krusty Krab burn down when it's under the ocean? Why would we be kidnapped and placed into the Chum Bucket? What the ever-loving heck is going on in this god-forsaken game? Halfway through into number five, Day Shift at Freddy's. Okay, this is a, this is a weird game 
for so many reasons. But even as we discussed earlier on this list, weird isn't always bad. This game is definitely weird, but it's also pretty great. In this game, you play as an entertainer slash Freddy's general staff member who walked around inside the spring lock suit at a Freddy's location entertaining children. Of course, it's not all fun and games though, because you're in a spring lock suit. Ah, not only is there a lot to watch out for and a load of work to be done, but there is also some fan related jokes within the game that are pretty hilarious and also fairly bizarre. Basically, Day Shift at Freddy's has got it all. If you haven't experienced this bizarre gem, then go over to Game Jolt and do so now. Maybe if I'm in a spring lock suit, I could finally make it with Chica. Day Shift at Freddy's is also one of the is it has its own franchise, but so there is more to play if you decide that you like it. In it for five nights at the car. The description of this game on Game Jolt reads, quote, Hey bro, thanks for doing this job. You are a 10 year old kid who is in the car at the mall waiting for your mom, but weird things want to kill you, so your job is to protect yourself from them. If you're hearing this, you're crazy. What? <laughs> this game is so absurdly bad that it hurts me. The game is literally just a PNG file that looks absolutely atrocious. Don't get me wrong, I know it takes a lot to make a game, but I could have made a game better than this. This is just a cardinal sin of humanity and it needs to be put down. I hope that this was a joke. It, ha it has to be a joke, right? I've talked about this game multiple times previously and honestly, I haven't been able to get it out of my head since that first encounter. It's like it's stalking me. I still have sleepless nights because of this damn thing. Download it so you can see the PNG files. Actually, you don't even need to. Go to the game troll page and just look at the images. There you go. That's the game. Getting close to the end in number three, Five Nights at Anime. <laughs> Luck. I know that people love the animatronics, and sometimes it can get a little weird, but even I was surprised to learn that this game existed. That's right, I was surprised, and I have made two jokes about making it with Chica this video. And I've seen a lot of fan art for this franchise, okay? A lot. I thought I had seen it all, but apparently, I haven't. Enter Five Nights at Anime, or in Anime, whatever it's called. This is a game that was created to parody FNAF, um, obviously, but instead of you being a security guard at a Freddy's location, you've been hired as a security guard at an anime convention. And it's up to you to watch these anime girl style animatronic versions of the Freddy's cast. Yeah, we've got the core cast of the animatronics, but just stylized as well-endowed anime ladies, because why the f not? I think the really weird thing about this game is how many people seem to want more of it and want a version that leans more into this genre as opposed to it being a parody. Yikes, like I'll make the jokes, but I ain't playing this game unless I make a Patreon. <laughs> And ultimately, Anna number two, Five Nights in Anime 2. Just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, Five Nights in Anime has a sequel. Oh boy. And the hits just keep on coming. This version of Five Nights in Anime is even more bizarre, and it's uh, just, it's really more of the same, but even weirder, with the same tropes, but this time parodying, you guessed it, FNAF 2. My question is, if this is a joke, and like, and a parody in the same vein, why did we get a sequel? Like, I, I know why, but I, I don't know. There, there must have been people asking for it. Cause like, that, this is a thing that is real. Also, let's just take a second to acknowledge that the first Five Nights in Anime game got 3.5 million downloads, whereas Five Nights in Anime 2 got 1.8 million. So, at least they relaxed a little bit after the first one. It, it's better than that one mod for Security Breach that people keep telling me to download in my Instagram DMs. People, you do realize what platform this is, right? The only way I could do that is if I started a Patreon for those games. Wait, wait a minute. That could work. Oh wait, no, I'm not famous enough for that. <laughs> and finally, in a number one, Five Nights of Love. Ah uh, yes, the game that I knew existed, but didn't know it existed until I looked it up. This game actually inspired this whole list. And you know what? I was hoping it wasn't real, but it is. <laughs> I figured that if KFC had a dating sim, then FNAF must have one too, right? And it absolutely does. Yep, you heard me right. 
this is a FNAF dating sim. You love shipping animatronics with everything living or not, as we explored in a previous video, okay? Entered ex exotic butters, really? Whether it be a human trapped in a suit with just a pile of trash, you'll ship it. And honestly, it's disturbing. But this time, you get to decide who makes the cut in Five Nights of Love. Remember when I was talking about like Fun Time Freddy facts and I was doing the whole dating show joke? Yeah, that that's this, okay? Tracking via cameras the rooms of the public place, a player will periodically meet the live toys, animatronics Chica, Foxy, Freddy, and Balloon Boy. With every one of them, the player can have a heart-to-heart -heart talk and hug these unfortunate freaks, giving them all their love and attention. Thanks to this treatment though, the level of the toys love towards you will only increase by 5 or 10 percent, but the level of your energy will consequentially decrease by 10 or 25 percent. Once your energy is out, the player has to return to their office and start their next day. Partially, the player can refill their energy at Balloon Boy by 50% at once, if you're lucky. Over the period of five days, you are to make as many animatronics happy as possible, earning bonus scores for this. S the more scores you get, the more successfully the game is completed. Dear God, why is this a thing? You wanna make it with an animatronic, then play! Five Nights of Love. <laughs>